then it's not an avenue then for me anyway I don't feel like yeah. it's an avenue then to throw them but you know what's interesting around the whole what Kat also had to do is there's the truth um, uh, there's what's legally proven to be true or not and then there's the court of public opinion are you a lawyer? can we discuss? <laughs> <laughs> no I need to know because this is the second what's going on? <laughs> I told you you were you were not resting. You were you were reading up on. Okay, all right. Sorry, carry on. In the court of public opinion, people still think that he did X or someone else did Y or whatever it might be. That's then just just, just has the same impact, whether or not it's the truth, it doesn't matter. So what he's doing by now throwing them under the bus is that in reality, he's now getting you to question their credibility. Mm. So then, if they if they're no, no longer credible sources of information then it makes it less likely that you believe the other things that they said in the first place. That's very true. So Very smart. It's, it's good PR. Yeah, it is really good PR. Anyway, how are you, Abby? <laughs> I'm good, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, it's the new year. It feels like, it feels like it's been a few months. Mm. January has already felt like it's been a few months. I generally feel like I'm in March. Yeah. And to be honest yeah. with you, like I just had to hit the ground running and just get stuff done. Yeah, you're, but you're always... I, did you even rest this... You know what I did? Like How many days? About a week. Okay. Like, so yeah, five, five to seven days. I literally just slept and ate and that's it. Like I didn't really let myself do any work. Okay. And it was amazing. It's exactly what I needed. But when you say not let yourself do any work, what were you doing? I think I was mostly watching... Netflix actually wow. and I, I legit do not have time for Netflix you normally you so don't have time for anything yeah yeah so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think Netflix YouTube um I, I probably did a little bit of work somewhere but it was mostly what did you watch because last time we spoke I think when we even when we were doing that um end of year uh wrap up games and stuff like that like we were mentioning things and you're like i have no idea what i don't i don't know what you guys are talking about i don't know what yeah. so i'm actually a bit concerned about what you actually spend your time watching I so when do. i when you said you were resting you were mm. i was like is this educational resting <laughs> <laughs> or is this actually like mindless things it was mostly mindless okay. mostly mindless what did you watch um one thing i think i only did watch one thing actually uh it was Wait. a <laughs> You only watched one thing. Yeah. And you said, oh, I spent all my time watching Netflix and <laughs> See, one I, thing. I can't tell you what else I did with my time. I legit don't remember at this point. Okay. But um, it was a show called The Blue-Eyed Samurai. Hold on. I think, is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix, yeah. I think I'm, I am watching, I'm not really watching somebody else's what husband is watching, but yeah. I think I'm watching that at the oh, he's moment. he's got good taste. Yeah, yeah, he's he does. He does. Yeah, but... Yeah, it's actually pretty good. If it's the same, is it the one where the woman is pretending to be a man? Yeah, yeah, okay. But you know, spoilers. Was that a spoiler? No, nah, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. That is a really good show. Mm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Anything else? Did you do anything else? No, just friends, family, food, rest, that's it. Like, I was quite... I was quite intentional about making sure that I recovered because I won't lie, I pushed myself extremely hard last you year. Um, and I didn't... I didn't have any type of break from, let's say, around June until yeah. until December. So I was like, if I was meant to go to Ghana, but I had to cancel that. You were going to go to Ghana? I was going to, yeah. You were going to do... I, I get really annoyed when Ghanaians say Dirty December because that's a Nigerian thing, but you were going to do Dirty December. <laughs> it was on my plans. I wanted to go, but then... Um, Lord, in Ghana? I, I've been before, you know. No, but... Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you gonna would you what would you have been doing? Would you have been hitting the hitting the clubs, another club, another club? What what happens in Ghana stays in Ghana, isn't it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> we see it on everyone's social media. But <laughs> well, that would have been yeah, nice. No, nah, I would have loved to have gone, but I realised quite early on that it's it's unrealistic. Mm. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Yeah. I haven't gone on holiday for a very long time as well, so um, yeah, I'm hoping this year I can. I can. What are you thinking? Mm, I've been to Hong Kong before, and I want to go again. Nice. Yeah, I, I've been waiting a while because there was a lot that has happened over the years with with Hong Kong, and um, uh, I was going to say protests and stuff like that. So it's been yeah. a bit like, mm, but um, yeah. So yeah, I was thinking Hong Kong or Malaysia. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to experience. Cool. That side of the world. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's me. I think I saw something on TikTok where somebody was like, 
they plan their goals in like three month periods mm. so that so like for december for january they planned it in october yeah and they were leading up to it so that by january it was already so it was it was done so not yeah. starting it in yeah, january yeah, yeah, and i was yeah. like why why have i never thought about that i always think okay i don't have to think about that right now mm. it's something for the future and yeah. then i get overwhelmed when the time comes mm. and i just don't, don't do, do it, it at all. <laughs> I, I think do that's it. the problem. If if you kind of just make goal set and that's the part of your life, and then when you've completed one, move on to the next, yeah. then it becomes easier. Yeah. Or if you look at the goals that you didn't accomplish last year, and if they're still relevant, then you already have your goals for this year. Say that again. So if you set goals last year, yeah, and you didn't accomplish them, or at least some of them weren't accomplished, and those goals are still relevant for your life now, mm. then just keep your goals and you don't have to do the goal setting process again. Okay, I get what you mean. Are there are there are there any goals that you have that you've just they've just been on rotation? <laughs> yeah. The big goal last year that I so there are two goals that transferred from last year into this year for me. And in fact they're now my only two goals for the year, basically. Mm. Um one is to launch my course. Um mm. and that is it's evolved a lot more. It's going to be a lot bigger than what I was originally planning. Um, and we'll talk about that eventually on the podcast and people this know about it. This is one of it. the, yeah, I'm really excited. Something's coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the second was, um, is making the most of this podcast. Mm. So when it came to my goal of launching the podcast last year, I had a number of sub goals underneath it. Um, most of those were ticked off, like build a great team, like have a good systems processes. That's half ticked off. But the thing that wasn't done, as we've discussed before, is we haven't been good at like doing getting clips out on a consistent basis. Oh my gosh, we, we not even we haven't been. We've been horrific, terrible, like, terrible. But uh, but yes, we, we, we solved that. We right? solved it. We have so, a, a, a um, social clips person. So is that a job description? That, let's go with that. <laughs> but you know what? There's not been a, a role that uh, that has existed properly before like even yeah. for finding people to to do it and you know they're like okay we can do 20 clips for x amount and it's just like do you know what exactly you're saying you can do yeah 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 and and the magnitude of how much you would have to produce mm -hmm. um and so even like how they quote themselves it's just so we have had some extremes yeah, and mass. there's some people that yeah. it's just like you're not gonna this is yeah so yeah. yeah it's actually really exciting that we finally have it somebody is. and that's the that. it's um because obviously we had this conversation i think earlier this week so it one of the reasons it was so easy for me to say yes to you know what, let's make this investment mm. was because it's one of my goals so if i can take off one of my goals before the first two weeks of the year is done yeah. then it's all good yeah no, that makes sense I don't think I am. Um, I've. I really like what you're saying about you've reduced it to two goals. I, I think sometimes I put too many, and that's probably why I don't like achieve even the ones that are, are the most important, or I don't mm. acknowledge which ones are the most important. Yeah, I'm just trying to get all of them done and just don't d just end up not doing any of them. Yeah. Um. So this is probably the second year that I haven't actually properly set goals because of that. I think mm. there's trauma there. <laughs> trauma there. Um. But I've set like, okay, I've got this, these are the things that I'm working on and these are the yeah. things that are coming up. But just actual goals, even within those things, I just, I haven't Can done that. Can you share any of those? The things I'm doing. The the goals, anything. No, I mean, I don't, so so I don't have goals, but I do, I've, I have been trying to create or to build a production company for a while, mm -hmm. um, a podcast production company. And people are always like, but you're already doing that. Why do you keep saying you're trying to? You produce podcasts already. Right, we're literally here right like, now. <laughs> what are you? Um, I don't know what it is that I don't know what I need to. What I feel in my head that like I need to get to to be mm. able to say that. Oh, I have a production company. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm. I'm building at the moment, and I I'm trying to figure out the best way to juggle all the clients that I have and I have some high, va high, high, not high value. No, I have high value, but I've got Claude. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got Claude. Um, Claude is a high value c c client that I have. And, um, and I, yeah, I re very much, uh, yeah, very, very much value and uh, appreciate all that I, I can do with this podcast. It's our podcast. We've said yeah, this. So um, yeah. So just making sure that I'm like, building 
and building other people to to support the other elements and the other podcasts so that I can spend my time on the things that I really so you mean to. building systems and processes? This, oh my this. gosh, Claude, please free me. But yes, <laughs> I have to build systems and processes. Mm. Um, yeah. It's almost as if... Uh, You've been saying this the whole of my... <laughs> the, 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 the whole year. Build the systems and processes. We need to do systems and processes. I'm like, yeah, but this person is so great. Let's just think about how amazing they are. Mm. But can they, you know, deliver some structure? And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. I feel like you, you you have been slightly mentoring me. No, you have been a mentor even without saying, and I've just been really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just been taking, I've, I've thrown business ideas to you and you have helped me see the light and focus on the right things. Though you, the way you squashed that, <laughs> I said... I, spent so, I, spent I don't so rem- I even remember what it was but I just remember thinking yeah this this is this is not it no is no not it. because my whole my whole thing for me is that I don't do things for we all do things we want to we want to be comfortable but I don't I don't lead with oh I just want to make money for off this person I actually want to make people money Mm. that and so I was trying to find a way okay I have really great clients they have really great great ideas they have podcasts that can really touch people and but they're not making money yeah and I and that's the thing in my head I was just like how can I help them make money Mm. but it was that the journey of that um but yeah I will say and I know this is going way off topic for wherever you wanted to go this for this podcast where are we going Uh, we 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 actually said Mm. I said don't think about it you did you did you did yeah but um your mentality towards setting up the business isn't like it's exactly it in terms of find a problem that's worth solving that that's the first place to start but then setting up a business that will make money for you is often best when you do something that's going to make other people money Mm. so you got the first two things right the third thing of actually what is the idea itself that's where it was a little bit yeah but you're on the right track you're 100 percent on the right track so i would encourage you to keep on trying but yeah 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 well, I'll, I'll keep throwing the ideas over to you because you are one of the clients so we got to make you money <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so that's that's my in, in my when you said what my goals are what I've been focusing on yeah. um that's really it no I'm not gonna lie I don't actually have a goal I just heard well, what you're working on like what are you I told you but I told you I don't have okay. I have not set actual set, goal set one now then set one now yeah. oh what's going on <laughs> <laughs> set a goal yeah what do you actually want to achieve so we know that you're working on the business but what is the goal what's the end end result what does success look like i mean it is a, a, a flourishing business you know that the the top I, i've got three three main clients and i want those i want to be able to secure a deal for all three of those clients this year no that's that's a goal yeah yeah okay well okay. done um, I support that goal that. as a client. Okay. Well, I'm glad you support the goal. <laughs> Thank you. And also, you've, so do all the listeners. Have wow. All that accountability. <laughs> that accountability, all 100 of you. <laughs> I'm joking. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for helping me set a goal. I, yeah, that was mm. actually not as hard as um, I thought, but yeah, it has to be realistic. And I think that is realistic. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think on, uh, on the same line, um, one of the decisions that you had to make last year as well as um I did is around jobs Mm -hmm. and like finding a job that works for you and that that um can contribute and support the goals that you have yeah um and I think it's an interesting one because I I feel like our generation we just are constantly looking for that job and then we so we we don't stay at jobs very long Mm -hmm. um I don't know if that is exactly the right way about it. I guess it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Mm. But if you're trying to maximize your income, then staying in a role for more than three years is a bad decision. Like you should be changing every two to three years to to move yourself forward. Uh, And that even includes promotions, like promotions within the same company. Yes, you'll go an increase in income, but nine times out of ten, you'll get a much bigger increase by going somewhere else. Mm. Um, it does depend on the organisation because some companies have better cultures and processes around this. But for the most part, yeah, to if you want to maximise your income, moving is the right thing to do. 
Okay. Three years. Mm-hmm. To be honest, even that feels long. It <laughs> it can be. It can but that the feels own, long. it can be but then it also depends on the level of the game that you're playing mm. so if you're talking like junior roles then yeah three years is a long time if you're talking mid-level eh, it's all right but if you're talking that like leadership because what will also happen when recruiters look at your cv they don't want to have you be a leader for a year and a half yeah, so if you look like you don't have the ability to make a commitment to stay somewhere then you would, that becomes a, a X against your name as to why they would hire you in the first place. Do you know what? That is really, really hard in this culture because there are so many startups that, you know, you get a really great position there and, but the business is, the business model is just, it's just not, not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. And so, yeah, like you are only there for a short period of time mm. um, because it's just, yeah, it's not sustainable. So it's a bit unfortunate, but there's, there's a lot of opportunities to get good money and have a really great position but they are not great places to work yes <laughs> that is extremely true um and to be honest with you there are very few places that are both that tick all the boxes good money great culture and meaningful work mm. like, there's very few places that that accomplish that okay so in that sense well, just going back to the whole job hopping um if you're saying if you are job hopping, if you're in a job that less than a year or more, more than, sorry, a year and a half or in some that's some degree, it will look bad to keep jumping around. If you want to be a leader. If you want to be a leader. Yeah. So okay. if, you're, if you're okay with entry and middle, then it's not so bad. Okay. But like, think about it from your point of view. If you're, if you're line manager, boss, CEO, chief, whatever, like changed every year and a half Ooh. how would you feel yeah I, well when you put it like that you know, yeah. like you need they need stability at a leadership level it's that simple mm. so is that why they'll be keeping people even though they know that they're, they're not that great as leaders and they just keep them there for a bit longer so one of the reasons but in all honesty it's actually not easy to find to, good people yeah finding good people is definitely not easy but even some in many cases actually letting go of people at a certain level is also difficult because what tends to happen is that a they ha- tend to have good contracts and then b they have the ability to hire good lawyers so <laughs> like it's, it's actually very true like if you if you let go of if you okay i'm going to give us a, a uh, anonymous story from a friend that I know. Yes, we get um, story time. <laughs> <laughs> um, this friend was let go from their position in an unfair way, and their company really did like mistreat them, etc. But <clears throat> if you had heard that in most cases, then you would have been like, "Oh, that really sucks. That was a bad experience. Mm. That's a shame. Like, let's move on and move forward." But this friend now decided that you know what, I've got a little bit extra money. Let me actually talk to a lawyer um, mm. and see what happened. Um, so they went and spoke to a lawyer. Um, they realized that the company, a lot of the stuff the company did was not only incorrect, but a lot of the threats that the legal department had given them, of like you have to do this or this can't be done and X, Y, Z, yeah. were just lies. Because the reality is, is that the legal department will say things knowing that most people will not push back yeah. because most people just assume that you're going to tell them the truth. Yeah. And even if you don't, they don't have the resources to go and fight the case. This person did have said resources and they have now ended up with an extremely nice um, settlement as a consequence of doing so. So that's so when you mess around with people that can afford the... like lawyers accountants etc or whatever it might be then it's a different story do you know what, that scenario i'm trying to tread really carefully with how i how i answer this because because uh, linkedin exists that's why mm-hmm. that's why i'm treading carefully <laughs> um but i can relate mm-hmm. i can relate mm-hmm. um I, you know what i'm gonna say most people probably can yeah, like, I'm going to say the vast majority of people have had a really bad experience in their workplace yeah. and their mentality was, I'm just glad I got out of there. Whereas when you, once again, when you have a little bit more resources behind you, you're like, I'm glad I'm out of there and now I'm going to make them suffer. Yeah. 
Is there any like limit? You know, like with uh, some crimes, there's a statute of limitation. Yeah. Yeah. Is is there for for work? I believe so, but I'm not mm. a lawyer, so guys. If you have experience, <laughs> find out because I, I agree. If you don't have the right resources, I in in my I'm not I'm, I don't I'm not saying when it happened or whatever, but in my case, I I did have the right resources, but decided to still when it got to a point not take it further because mm. I just I think I'm just I just got too a bit too emotional about it and I was yeah, just yeah. like oh like. Is a company, but there's also people, and I just I felt I started to feel bad. Right. But it was crazy how I started to feel bad for something the company did to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if I, I, it's not fair for it to for them to make you feel like uh, like that, you, there's actually like a financial figure associated with something to do with like hurt your feelings being hurt or something of that nature. <laughs> like no, I'm, I'm being deadly serious, and oh it's not a small God. number. It's like like 10, 15, 20K that you can get for, I, can't, I don't remember the technical term, yeah. but for the emotional distress they put you through. Yeah. So get a good enough lawyer and get that money. Well. Because again, extra 20K is not a... Oh, it's not a joke. <laughs> do you know what I mean? In Cozy Lives, mm. it's not a joke. Um, well, okay, you're giving, you're giving us legal facts. Since, <laughs> since when, sir? What can you not do? <laughs> um outside of what can you not do i i was speaking to you the other day about standing on business mm-hmm. and you were like what what does that mean so no i know what standing on business means it's all the other stuff you said around it about like vaseline and tims and all that i'm just like no, what, what? I, I would say what i meant by that was like standing <laughs> sorry just that by itself it's like what are you saying standing on business is not to fight but if you need to fight Get the Vaseline, get the, get no, the tins. I still don't know. What, what do you mean? That's like an, it's like an American thing where, you know, when in the hood, when they're, when they're about to fight, mm. the Vaseline makes the punches just slide off your face. Well, why would you want the punches to slide off your face? <laughs> <laughs> like, it does, it's not making well, sense Well, it doesn't you. have to actually be, you know, real punches. You know, it's, it could, we could just be t- saying... No, I, I understand that. I do get that it's not necessarily we're literally talking that it's a street fight. Yeah. But I'm saying like the concept of like, if I'm going to fight somebody, putting on Tim's is going to slow me down. <laughs> and Vaseline is like, like he just said, it's going to make the punches less effective. So. That's good. No, you put the Vaseline on. So if somebody punches oh, you. Oh, you put it on you. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. You take off the earrings, oh, okay. put the Vaseline on. And so if they punch you, you know. But it doesn't. It's not physical. We're not talking about yeah, physically. Yeah, no, I, know, I, know. I mean, they they were, you know, mm, mm, in the mm, films mm. and all that. But um, yeah, standing on business is like this year procrastination, your self self worth being in the trash. All of that mm. stuff. It's not. It's not running. Yeah, Second yeah. guessing yourself, mm-hmm. um, sitting on ideas. All of that. We are standing on business. Okay. Twenty twenty four. That's I'm, that's I'm what down. it means. That do you, you yeah. It you sounds it. like bad fr- friends, friends that you can't trust. All of, out, standing mm. on business. I hear yeah. it. It just sounds like another way of saying be a practical dreamer, if you ask me. <laughs> and, and I've, you know what? Yeah. I've been saying that since you know like 2013. So well, yeah, be a practical dreamer. Then standing mm. on maybe we can merge. No, yeah, that's if what's our new slogan. Standing on business. Dream Nation, stand on business. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I feel, I feel that. I was like, yeah. Dream Nation stand on business. I don't know if we, if we're allowed to use. I don't know who, who created that phrase, but yeah. I, I have a feeling that they haven't copyrighted it. You know, a lot of people. How, how but you, but you wouldn't count all of them as like Cody's, right? Oh no, definitely not. No. Yeah. You have um, your. I've got a very small circle of people that I consider to be my friends, mm. um, and they're the people that are that have been there when like good and bad because when you're up like I've been up before like a dream nation has been a really big brand in the past like random people knew it meet, stopped me on the street being like oh you're that person this and that everybody wants to be a friend at that point mm. um and I've also been down in terms of like disappeared not there not this and that etc and you can definitely see like how you get treated differently mm. um so the people that I consider to be my friends are the ones that nothing changed like when when I was when I was having hard times, depressed, and anxious with this and that, the people that I'm calling up on the phone, the people that I'm spending time with, the people that like I know them like deeply and they know me deeply. Um, everyone else is basically an associate. 
like not in a negative no, way, no, 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 not in a negative yeah. way at all. <clears throat> I, I'm not on bad terms with like the vast majority of humanity. Why are you making faces? You know why. <laughs> I'm on good terms with the vast majority of people and as on purpose, like I don't I don't believe in having beef. I don't believe in negative relationships and all that stupidity. Like we're all trying to move somewhere, accomplish something, do something meaningful. Mm. And it's far easier if we do that together than separately. But it doesn't mean that you are also someone that I can tell the close, that I can be real with, vulnerable with, on things of that nature. Yeah. I've really struggled with that. Um, I have my close friends and people always, you know, talk about building your network and then the people around you and, you know, and I have really amazing people around me and maybe some of them are business minded and they think about all that stuff and, and they, they all have their strengths and they mm-hmm. all are like, superior in the you know different areas of life but in terms of business I know that I don't have as many friends that are like on 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 that it definitely helps having people around you that are like in the direction that you want to go Mm. but you are right there is a there's also a balance to be struck with like is this this is just a business relationship yeah and if it is that's that's okay as well you can just have business relationships Um, isn't that a bit like but in my mind a like, business relationship is really a partnership like mm. we're going to do this project together and move forward mm. um whereas if you're talking about so there yeah i'll say i'll say this i won't say who but like there have been guests on this podcast where i'm just like you know what this person is really awesome and i need to spend way more time with them i would generally like to be their friend yeah. and they've also expressed the same back but then as we know building that friendship relationship as adults is not easy oh it's not it's not easy you don't have the time no, the capacity no. and then also you've been burnt so much before from people that you're you're very much like there's only so much you, you know, know. What? i won't lie i don't think when it comes to friendship i've yeah things haven't worked out but i don't think the being burnt side is something to stop me at least mm. not with friendships anyway i don't know i don't i get what you I don't I I have kept the same fr- friends so I haven't if if my friends have burnt me we're friends still <laughs> <laughs> and we've 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 been honest with each other and move forward and mm. but I know that there's some friendship there I think there's one or two friendships where they showed me themselves in a way that I was like yeah it's actually okay yeah 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 and I see them we're, we're in like the friendship same friendship group I see them and I'm just like casual but I would never and that, I mean, that's wise. Yeah. I mean, that's I just wise. Yeah. I think, so my best friends, um, I've mentioned them a few times, Bola. Um, yeah, we've been friends since reception. Reception? Reception, yeah. It's either reception or year one, one of the two. My so, gosh. So, like, it's, so yeah, as if you're talking about friends that you're cool with, I, I legit, like, he's been my ride or die for so long, if you know what I mean. Mm. Like, more than that's not even half my life that's the vast majority of my life at mm. this stage um and I'm very blessed that he also happens to be a very good entrepreneur mm. um so yeah like I get I would hate to think how I would have worked some stuff out business-wise if I didn't have him as a default person to always bounce stuff off yeah. or in many ways like there are many things that he completely excels at that I don't and I think in many regards we kind of like cover each other's weaknesses in terms of knowledge are you so, both in the same like industry or similar industries uh so he runs black ballads um okay so yeah. yeah there's a lot of links but also i think i said this before you might have forgotten but we set up our first like six businesses together yeah so we've been in directly the same not even industry company for for many many years mm. um but yeah and i think we also have like a really broad sense of business that we can go on to up companies and completely different fields anyway so yeah. that makes sense and now that I think about it I do I do think I have a few friends that have maybe they're interested in real estate or like gift bags and package it but it's just because there's no one in my spa- in the space I'm in that mm. I sh- that that's why I'm needing that but you know what's interesting at least in my eyes now most of business is pretty universal mm. like I feel like 80 percent maybe is like these principles and ideas apply no matter what industry you're talking about. And it's that last 20%, which is quite specialist to your industry. So if you can kind of begin to understand the foundations of what makes a good company, then you can probably still have those conversations with friends in mm. completely different industries and still learn a lot from each other. That's true. Okay. All right. 
I'll have this conversation. Good. Oh, we have um, one random thing that I wanted to discuss with you today. Um, it actually reminded me from Emmanuel's conversation, um, that you, the, the conversation you had with Emmanuel that somebody reached out to you and, and said something and you had to go and speak to him about it because you wanted to... You know, you know the in the inter- you don't remember. I don't. I really don't remember oh, this at all. <laughs> okay, let me go back. Mm-hmm. There was an incident that I think something that Emmanuel may have posted online or something or an opinion, and you and somebody spoke to you about it. Yeah. Okay. And then so, yeah, you no, went to was, speak to him. Yeah, it was uh, an event. It was an event. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you went to speak to him about it, mm-hmm. um, and it made me think about uh, when someone. Do you know what it, is? it reminded me of Cat Williams, and I know it sounds really random, just to bring it, <laughs> bring it together. But let me explain. Let me explain. Because um, recently, Cat Williams went on to um, this podcast. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the podcast. Does anybody here remember the name of the podcast? Okay, uh. recently he went on a podcast that a lot of the uh, black men and in, in, in black African black American African American African American men, yeah. um, you know, have gone to speak on the they are um sportsmen they're comedians they're actors etc but a few of them went on and had recounted conversations or situations with cat williams um and cat williams was like i have to come on the show because all of them were lying um Mm -hmm. and um you know and he came to try and obviously clear his name and then in the process came and did just scattered yeah, he just, people's he scattered madness. People. But the reason why I made that connection and I wanted to find out what, um, your, your view on it was that he decided to come and correct people. So you mm. correct, you, you had a conversation with Emmanuel and, you know, to, to, what, to discuss, you know, whatever the situation was. I don't know yeah. if he then publicly said, oh, apologised for whatever. But mm. um, yeah, you, in a sense, sorted it out privately but Kat said, I need the world to know that whatever you think of me is not true. And I wondered, like, for in general in business, when things go wrong or when situations arise and then everyone thinks that has an opinion of you in some way, do you feel that you need to come out and say this is wrong? Or do you can you hold it and be like, oh, you know what? They can keep that opinion of, of me because I know the truth. Did that make sense? That made sense. And you see how I, a, I, 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 it's I just, tried. It's just a segue. It yeah, was, I tried. Well done. I tried. And you want to think that you like host a podcast I or know, something. you know, and I don't, you know, but. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, this is a complicated question. Um, and I, cause I've been on multiple sides of this and I've also been on the side of publicly well i i didn't want well, to be public you were humiliating them no i really we're not humiliating <laughs> it was not humiliating <laughs> so what uh, side so were you on it was um it's complicated it's so complicated oh my days and i can't even Let go sip. even now i still can't go into details about things because it's there some of the stuff is quite sensitive but i will say i wish i had spoke directly with the person um that could have solved so many things i thought i was doing the right thing at the time because yeah oh, it's so wow. complicated i can't even there's so much i can't i literally am not allowed to say like i'm not even like front end i can't say but i can say the lessons that i learned from that is i wish i had gone directly to the person that had concerned mm. um and had a conversation with them because i had access to do so um and at the time I decided to, I heard one part of the story or one side of the story and decided to, to run with that. And mm. although even the way that I ran with it, I wanted to, I was trying to still do it in a peaceful way. I was trying to keep it out of like public eye, et cetera. I was like, let's just, let's just arrange a time to talk about this. But it was so, it got so out of control. Um, and then it did become something that could have potentially become damaging to said person okay. that was being, um, I guess, targeted or focused on or however you want to describe it and I had a conversation with him like uh sometime later and the one thing that he was really disappointed with was like why didn't you just talk to me and mm. it, he was right I didn't have an answer I was just like I, I was so caught up in thinking that I was doing the right thing that I didn't even stop to think let me get all the sides of the story mm. um or the even better option which I would probably opt for now say I am not involved just yeah. literally does not involve me or concern me. Like, 
I'm really sorry that this is a situation that you guys are in, but it's it's not mine, and yeah. I don't need to be a part of it. So, <sighs> so yes, if I'm now, and that's probably why I handled things very differently with Emmanuel. Um, and even Emmanuel's situation was nothing like this whatsoever. It wasn't that that deep, to be fair. Um, but yeah, like if I've got a relationship with you, I will talk with you very directly around what is being said elsewhere. Um, and that's and that's my responsibility. I've told you, you now know, you can do whatever you want with that information. Okay. Um, when it comes to myself... I was going to say, when yeah, it comes to you... Uh, I would prefer you come and talk to me. Um, and I prefer that we deal, deal with that. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not into the whole public trauma, beef, all that sort of stuff. Like, people know who I am. Like, it's not... That's not me. Like, I'm not here to play games in that regard. So come and talk to me and we mm. can discuss it. If I've made a mistake, I will apologise and I'll correct my behaviour. That's not an issue. I don't have pride and ego around that sort of stuff. I'm just mm. trying to be better and I'm not perfect. That's fine. But if you're now going to be making a public spectacle of it, I think it depends. I think sometimes you do need to set the record straight because it can be actually damaging. Yeah. So especially like someone in my situation, like I... My reputation is a part of my income. Like, and I'm not talking about like podcasts and all of that. Like, yeah. I sit on the board for various organizations that are like really significant. And it's literally part of my every year I've got to re sign that I'm still fit to do this role. Um, like, some of the roles I get, like, not even some, every one of the roles I get, the recruiters will tell you the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go look through your Twitter feed to make sure there's nothing there. That is going to seriously. No, seriously. Like every single one of the votes I get. Like if you wonder why my tweets are always so chill. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you no. You can make you can make like, it, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> no, but deadly serious. Like they will my reputation, the yeah. way I conduct myself, the way I hold myself in public, is under scrutiny. And wow. my opportunities are like they're linked to that. So you're you're never gonna catch me moving mad. Like it's just not gonna happen. Mm. So if somebody's out there saying something that is painfully not true, then will I will I stand on business about it? Oh, get the you know the honest the honest truth is yeah. I'm probably going to talk to a lawyer, yeah. and probably the next thing that will happen is you will get a letter through the mail. Like that's the realistic outcome of what has to happen because if you're like damaging my reputation, you're damaging my income. Yeah, and if you damage my income, how am I going to pay you? It's true. Like, Please think of me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I actually have genuine responsibilities. I have people yeah. that are counting on counting on me and the things that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so it's not. It's never just about me. It's not even just about my family. Yeah. This is there are multiple people around the world that are counting on me to do what I'm doing and do it well, mm. so that I can continue to support them, so they can support their own goals, dreams, and lives. That is so wild when you really think about when somebody gets accused of something and you know if you if you if you've done it then yeah rightly so mm -hmm. but when people are wrongfully accused of something yeah you know even when they even if it's some somebody that has done it yeah all the people that are on you know that that work for them that their livelihoods are attached like it's actually so it's just so unfortunate yeah um but yeah i think if i i agree with you uh, when just looking at what cat did i think initially it could be looked at like yeah i've come to tell people yeah everything was wrong but i don't know if he needed to i guess it's because he's a comedian i don't know if he needed to then throw them under the bus with it mm. i think you can definitely say yeah this is not true and and make sure that that is clear but then the mm. th then then it's not an avenue then for me anyway i don't feel like yeah. it's an avenue then to throw them but you know what's interesting around the whole what cat also had to do is there's the truth, um, uh, there's what's legally proven to be true or not, and then there's the court of public opinion. Are you a lawyer? Can we discuss? <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to know. Because it's the second, what's going on? <laughs> I told you, you were, you were not arrested. You were, you were reading up on, okay, all right, sorry, carry on. But Say the three again. I, didn't read to, I just was so confused. Like, how do you know this? Go on. So there's the truth. Yes. There's what le there's what's legally true, isn't mm. what's been proven in the court of law or not, mm. um, which might it's not the same as the truth all the time. Mm. And then there's the court of public opinion. So it's like he 
may he, he may have to do the legal side. I think for all the things that I heard, none of it is that deep. So there's no need to take it legally in that regard. There's the truth, which we will never know. Only only those that are involved in the situation will actually know what the truth is. But then there's the court of public opinion, which is still in many cases just as valuable as the other two. Yeah. Because if in the court of public opinion, people still think that he did X or someone else did Y or whatever it might be, That's then just just, just has the same impact. Whether or not it's the truth, it doesn't matter. So what he's doing by now throwing them under the bus is that in reality, he's now getting you to question their credibility. Mm. So then if they're, if they're no, longer, no longer credible sources of information, then it makes it less likely that you believe the other things that they said in the first place. That's very true. So Very smart. It's, it's good PR. Yeah, it is really good PR. I definitely went to watch some of his sh- shows on Netflix afterwards. Yeah, so he even he even made money from it directly. <laughs> he did. I feel like he did. I mean, it's fine. Let me not. Let me not because I don't want to say where I stand on it. But they were good shows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, and I think the when when the public opinion is for the right cause we stand we stand on on that business when, when it's yeah. when it's like something that is yeah when it's not and there's not enough information and then we're going by a week lives have been destroyed so many and so it's quite yeah it's quite difficult but it's tough it's really 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 tough so yeah like just a question on it. that because sometimes i look and i um i uh reach out to some guests and I know that sometimes the stories or the things that they have gone through is quite public um mm. and in I just want to hear from you so I just put you on the spot um what is your opinion on oh wow yeah what is your opinion <laughs> on like no, no, not that topic. I mean, oh, just in I general. I thought you were going to give me like a ask some specific questions. No, 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 I'd be no, no, like, no. wow. Like, <laughs> just based on that, like if yeah. if you were in their shoes and and you know something that they have done or their business has done was was publicly out there and they got a lot of backlash from it, but you want to speak to them because it's ultimately this platform is to educate and to help people learn how to be better entrepreneurs and to pursue their passions and their goals you know Mm. with fully equipped you know um so they would be really amazing to talk to Mm -hmm. like yeah what how how do you how would you approach it as a as a host as a host yeah as a host I think to me first and foremost like I've been through enough in life and seen enough situations to know that once again what the public knows is probably not it so that's, that's only like probably a fraction of the story. Mm. Um, and also I've been in enough situations of responsibility, leadership, et cetera, where I also know what other people perceive things to be is also not it. Um, and I've also been in a situation where I've been under people's leadership or been impacted, et cetera, where it's like, I know how strongly I feel about this, but then later on discovered that I don't know the whole story. Mm. So my point of view in general, and this is me towards now at this age and stage of my life, I'm neutral. It's like, if it's not directly impacting me um, or the people around me, then it's like, I've got no massive reason to take a stance on something um, unless I can clearly see that it's wrong. Yeah. So there are certain situations, um, like there are things that happen in the world right now that in my opinion is evidently wrong mm, yeah um like and so that's that's a different matter but when we're talking about on the scale of individual people business etc like sometimes things are wrong sometimes they're not sometimes it's a bit of both um and sometimes it's not intentional so i now know that all my stance like i say i'll be neutral let's find out what the truth is mm. let's hear what your side of it is um but also like let's learn from this because we're going to make mistakes. If, you, if you're going into setting up a business, you're going to fail many, many, many times. Like your odds of success are hella low. So it's not so much around, did you succeed? It's more around, did you learn? And mm. did you do something differently tomorrow? And then with that, then hopefully, if you come and share on a platform like this, where you're going to get a an understanding, like an unbiased approach towards it from my viewpoint. Um, and in many cases, probably an empathetic one, because I, I may have been in a version of your situation, then we can actually get to the point where we can discover the lessons and then somebody listening can go ahead and learn from that so that they don't make the same mistake. So now it's not just, 
Now it's not just lessons for you and for the next thing that you do, but hopefully it could be thousands of other people that can learn from that and then go on to be better at whatever their dreams is, if it's business, if it's creativity, if it's their corporate career. Mm. So yeah, like I think if there's any place that sounds like an advert for my podcast right now. I mean, it's an amazing <laughs> advert. I mean, would you, I would do it. I'm but, sold. I mean, I don't have a story to tell, but I'm sold. But if there was any place where you was going to have a difficult conversation, then I think this will be it. It's a really good answer. Thank you. Thank you for our catch up, our second catch up of the week. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's been good. Has been. Cool. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.